So let's talk about Red Thirst, Black Rage, and Power Armor Space Marines bounding through the sky on jump packs with an overview of starting Blood Angels in Warhammer 40k 10th edition. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Blood Angels, and in this video I thought I'd share a few thoughts as to how you might go about starting an army for the Sons of Sanguinius in 10th edition Warhammer 40k. Blood Angels are a pretty fun, dynamic, and very hard-hitting army to collect, and in the video we'll talk about why you might want to field a force of these dangerous melee-focused space marines, some ideas for planning an army and first miniature purchases, and then a few ideas for getting a Blood Angels army together on the table. First up, why might you want to collect Blood Angels in the first place? The Blood Angels are one of the many chapters of Space Marines out there, genetically enhanced super soldiers in power armour that are at the core of the Warhammer 40k setting, and the Blood Angels is a specific chapter of those, basically embodying the noble hero trope, but unfortunately their chapter has forever been cursed with two fatal flaws, the Red Thirst in their gene seed can allow them to descend into fits of madness and rage, they must forever try and fight to keep it at bay though it can mean that they can have some extraordinary ferocity in close combat. The Black Rage is altogether more insidious, the chapter is haunted by the visions of their dying Primarch Sanguinius, martyred at the hands of Horus at the climax of the Horus Heresy, and eventually the Black Rage tends to overtake the vast majority of Blood Angels, driving them to madness and good for little else other than an honourable death in the Black Armoured Death Company, seeking a noble end against the enemy's foes before they cause more harm to their own battle brothers. The Blood Angels fight from their homeworld of Baal, and Commander Dante is the Lord Regent of the Imperium Nihilus, a big figure in the lore, and their preferred fighting style is rather fun. Brutal fast-moving space marines borne aloft on powerful jump packs, bounding through the sky on wings of fire to deliver judgement to the Emperor's foes in glorious close combat. They're a chapter that tends to prefer to fight at close quarters rather than shooting down the enemy at range. Miniature-wise, as a Space Marine chapter with some expanded options, they have about as many miniature choices as you have of any army in Warhammer 40k. You can use the entirety of the Space Marine core range, plus their own unique choices, so you can have various flavours of Primaris Marines, Storm Speeders, Impulsors and Repulsors and things, but then they do have their own range of miniatures alongside that for their more themed miniatures, the Black Armoured Death Company with their power weapons, the Golden Armoured Wing Sanguinary Guard, and unique tanks, dreadnoughts, and characters beyond that. There is at least some concern that a bunch of these might either get removed or replaced in the near future though, as we'll get on to. So far for the entire Primaris update thing, the only two miniatures that have been updated for Blood Angels are Commander Dante on the left, and Chief Librarian Mephiston on the right, the only one who's fought off the Black Rage. Both pretty cool miniatures I think, but it does mean that most of the rest of the faction just doesn't have a whole lot of support from the new and updated miniatures, Besides this, it's just an upgrade sprue and some parts to make some Death Company intercessors, and one unique lieutenant model that maybe isn't enormously different from the standard offering for normal Primaris Marine heroes. Otherwise, for the Firstborn kits, we have the Death Company. They've got loads of fun chapter-specific options, and you can fill them either as the foot variant or the jump variant, and they do have quite a lot of fun power weapons within the kit. Otherwise, their other iconic unique jump unit are the Sanguinary Guard, the Guardians of Commander Dante himself, stylized golden armor with some ornate winged pinions, supposedly some of the most elite and dangerous things that the chapter has to offer, though they are a little bit underpowered in game. They also have plenty of characters, including this sanguinary priest here, the chapter's unique apothecary. Finally, here are the unique Vile Predator with its Flamestorm Cannon and Heavy Flamer Sponsons, and they do have a unique Dreadnought kit as well, which you can build a Librarian Dreadnought, a Death Company Dreadnought, or a regular Furioso. Another fun vehicle option for the chapter. Price wise, being Space Marines, they do tend to be at least fairly cheap compared with other armies in Warhammer 40k. Space Marines are fairly elite, so you don't need as many models compared with other factions, plus, Space Marines tend to have the lion's share of good discount boxes, whether it's individual releases for Christmas Battle Forces, the starter sets for Warhammer 40k in general, or a good selection of combat patrols, a lot of which at the moment are kind of generic and can be used by any chapter. They also tend to have quite a good second-hand market as well, which doesn't hurt. Finally, for gameplay, the Blood Angels tend to be a pretty fun and dynamic, hard-hitting army to collect. Their most stereotypical builds over the ages has been loads of jump packs rushing forward and bounding from cover to cover, and then absolutely brutally hard-hitting melee damage when they get there, tending to be at least a bit easier to get into combat with some other factions, though perhaps their units not being standout tough for the cost as a result, just big damage and fast-moving. They certainly can do range things just as well as any other Space Marine chapter pretty much though, 
Usually a pretty even mix of range and melee things actually tends to be best for them at the moment in 10th edition until things change. Currently they have access to their own Sons of Sanguinius detachment, but can use any other detachment in Codex Space Marines. The Gladius and the Iron Storm both work out pretty well for them too. Currently in game they are unfortunately a bit on the weaker side in terms of power level. I feel like Games Workshop just has a few of their unique units quite over costed, maybe most notably the Sanguinary Guard. That does mean right now though that they're probably looking at some rules improvements at some point in the future. I feel it's quite likely in the January rules updates that they'll get either points drops or rules boosts, one or the other. Overall though, if you want a ferociously angry force of lawless space marines bounding into combat and tearing the enemy apart, then the Blood Angels might be an army for you. If you are choosing to collect Blood Angels, and there's plenty of places that you can do a little bit more research, you can have a read over Index Blood Angels which you can download from Games Workshop, pick up the Index cards for a read through, and Codex Space Marines does have sections on Blood Angels itself plus the rules for the vast majority of units in the army, bar the Blood Angels unique ones. Battlescribe and Warhopedia are other ways that you could mess around with a bit of list and army building. It can be kind of handy to make an army list to see where you're going with the faction, and there's always the option to do a bit of trying before you buy, trying some games on Tabletop Simulator if you're into that, or proxying some models with things you might already have to hand. There's absolutely tons of Blood Angels content on YouTube as well, I've made a ton of Space Marine videos, including a tier list, maybe not all enormously Blood Angels themes, though I have done a review of their index as well. There's plenty of battle reports, painting guides, and lore all over the place on other channels. I'd recommend Blood Angels Commander as a dedicated channel for the faction. Well worth checking out for a good balance of competitive lists, unit reviews, and some practical collecting things. Otherwise, check out social media as well. Discords, Facebook pages, and subreddits are all good to go. The Blood Angels have some for all of those. They're both a great place just to imbibe some content for the faction and understand what other people are talking about right now, as well as potentially ask any basic questions to more experienced hobbyists where there's some easy answers on hand for things that you might be confused about. In the early stages, when you're just getting going, as mentioned, it could be interesting to plan out an army list, maybe think about what you might want your first 1,000 points or 2,000 points worth of Blood Angels to look like. I'd either use Battlescribe or the Warhammer app to build those if you like, otherwise the points are available, downloadable from the Munitor and Field Manual on Games Workshop's webpage. Historically, standard Blood Angels lists tend to run fairly jump infantry heavy, just loads of their unique units build around that, between the Death Company and the Sanguinary Guard, plus a bunch of their unique characters have jump packs as well, so they're going to want jump pack retinues to lease. Perhaps some of the harder decisions to make are whether or not you might go for including firstborn miniatures at this stage, and we'll get onto that, and how much you want to be going down the theme of Blood Angels melee. Do you want to literally just go all out for a massive melee rush and include very little else, or are you going to go for a bit more of a well-rounded chapter force, having some powerful hard-hitting jump assault elements, but back that up with some heavy guns and some other objective holders? For paint schemes, you can go for the Blood Angels standard colour scheme, Generally red armour, often with helmets of a different colour to denote different chapter specialisms. Say for example, a lot of the assault troops tend to have yellow helmets. Otherwise, you could potentially paint up the army in a Blood Angel successor scheme. The Flesh Terrors are probably the most well known of that, given that they've had a miniature called Gabriel Seth. He still has some rules in game, though in all honesty he is somewhat likely to lose those rules next time the Blood Angels Codex is updated. Games Workshop no longer sell his model. Otherwise, there are plenty of other successor chapters that you could draw on, like the Knights of Blood or the Chronically Unfortunate Lamenters. In general, rules in 40k don't generally tend to be 100% tied to your chapter colour scheme, but these more divergent chapters are a bit of an exception, perhaps. You can just paint them up in your own generic successor chapter scheme if you'd like to, and maybe keep your options open if you wanted to field them as other chapters as well as just Blood Angels, even if Blood Angels might be your primary focus. In any case, there's a few different colour schemes that you could go for, plenty of ways to execute the iconic Blood Angels Red, and you'll find a few different options for different variants of the colour scheme here on YouTube. Well worth giving it a search and see what other people have done to execute the bright heraldry of the chapter. I'd say maybe something like a standard Assault Intercessor could be a good place to start out of them. It might be best to tackle some somewhat basic marines before moving on to the more fancy stuff. Get the standard issue red colour scheme worked out, and then think about how you might do the Golden Sanguinary Guard and the Black Death Company, and build things up from there. Talking of miniatures, let's talk about some options for first purchases. I feel like with Blood Angels there really are quite a lot of places that you could start with this. 
For me at the moment, I'd be a little bit wary of going very, very heavily into their firstborn range, as we'll get on to. And in the meantime, I'd be most tempted to have my first purchases be either a basic box of troops or one of the various discount options that Games Workshop has going for them, a combat patrol box of any sort, not even necessarily the Blood Angels one, potentially a Space Marine Spearhead Battle Force box. It's not the very most popular of those ones, but it's okay for the Blood Angels in my opinion or the Marines half of the Leviathan box, or some of the 40k starter sets, again they're pretty cool new Marine sculpts, and can absolutely be used by the Sons of Sanguinius. Starting out with perhaps one of the most obvious choices, Combat Patrol Blood Angels is one that you could go for to start with, this one contains a Primaris Librarian, 5 Intercessors, 5 Incursors that you could also build as Infiltrators, 3 Aggressors, an Impulsor Transport, and a couple of Blood Angels Upgrade Sprues, as it goes, I'd much more consider this a generic start Space Marine sort of box set, plus the Blood Angels upgrade sprues rather than a true Blood Angels force. Not having a single jump pack or entirely unique model within the box, I feel, prevents me from saying that it would be that. Still though, the discount is okay, 36% just for the model kits alone compared with buying separately, or 44% if you include the upgrade sprues. Kind of depends on how much you value those, they get you some custom shoulder pads plus a few other bits, but you could just use transfers for the shoulder pads if you'd like to. For the points in the box, after some Space Marine points cuts, it is a little bit light, around about 425 points, or could be a little bit more if you gave the Librarian an enhancement. And I'd honestly say it's a fine enough mix for just a generic start Space Marine bundle, it gets you some troops, some infiltration units, some hard hitting aggressors, and the standard transport for the faction. I'd say that literally all of the miniatures are usable in one way or another, perhaps some of the strongest choices right now might be the infiltrators to deny enemy deep strike, really powerful for scoring objectives while the blood angels assault units go off to jump and do fun stuff, and aggressors are just generally quite powerful in codex space marines full stop, perhaps particularly if you're choosing to run the blood angels in the gladius task force. As ever, when buying Warhammer 40k miniatures, I'd always remember the alternatives to Games Workshop Direct. Buying direct from Games Workshop does tend to be the most reliable for new plastic kits, but it's also the most expensive as other places discount their miniatures but sell the exact same thing. Local gaming stores would usually be my go-to for first places to buy Warhammer. Say for example, Element Games in the UK, usually between 10 and 20% off Warhammer minis. And there's lots of good places around the world, I'm sure you might have some in your area. Fenris Workshop in Canada is 10% off plus some store discount, and Gap Games in Australia is around about 20%. Good news if you're down under. All those are links down in the video description, and they are affiliate links that help support the channel with any purchases, as well as saving you a decent amount of money compared with the Games Workshop. Beyond that though, certainly worth checking out the second-hand market. eBay can definitely be worth a look for some discounts and potentially some time save getting miniatures together, though of course quality can be variable. And 3D printing and third party manufacturers are becoming ever more increasing things, either for cool custom bits to just make some fun aesthetic upgrades for your army, or potentially proxy counts as models that are sort of similar to what Games Workshop makes, but different enough to be legally distinct. Otherwise though, beyond the core combat patrol blood angels, there are quite a few other options. The other one that's maybe relevant at time of recording is the Space Marine Spearhead Force, one of the Christmas Battle Force boxes that didn't go down enormously well, just as it feels a bit light on the miniatures front mainly I think. I feel like Blood Angels are perhaps the army which it's single the most relevant for, as it gets you 15 jump pack infantry plus a jump pack captain, and then backed up by some outriders or an ATV, which I think I generally will be a little bit less excited about for the most part, but given that you're getting them at a discount it's not the worst. The price from GW was £140, €180 Euros, or $230 dollars, in general this one didn't tend to be the most popular of the Christmas Battle Force box sets, so you might well still be able to find some in either local gaming stores or in the Warhammer brick and mortar stores. This one gets you just over 500 points worth of miniatures in the box, so at least is a reasonable chunk towards a collection, even if it is lower points than most of the other Battle Forces. Otherwise though, Space Marines do have plenty of other options for discount things, particularly relevant at the moment is the Leviathan box, or at least the Space Marine half of it. Generally not available on Games Workshop's web store, but there are quite a lot of local Warhammer stores that might have a copy. This was originally £150, €200, Euros, or $250, coming with 4 characters, 5 Terminators, 10 Infernus Marines, 5 Stern Guard, and a Ballistus Dreadnought. Again, I'd see it as a bit more of a force to flesh out perhaps the bulk and support of the army, as opposed to the more iconic of the Blood Angels units, but it's definitely an option for getting some Space Marines on the board. 
Otherwise, there's quite a lot of other options for Primaris combat patrols and things out there, plus the Space Marine half of the Ultimate Starter Set as well. Out of these ones, I feel like the Dark Angels box is perhaps a particularly nice pick. Inceptors are quite nice with their jump packs, and the Redemptor Dreadnoughts just generally all round tending to be a fair powerhouse over the years. I'd probably rate it over the Death Watch or Space Wolf ones myself, though it does depend on which miniatures you'd value the most out of it, of course. Otherwise, for Blood Angels bits and parts, while the Primaris Upgrade Sprue thing does have a few parts, I'd say there's far more value to be had in the Death Company kit at the moment. That one really does have quite a lot of interesting bits for Sons of Sanguinius throughout it. It's got lots of shoulder pads, and while a few of them are marked with the Death Company cross sort of logos, lots of them are just genuinely really quite nice Blood Angels parts. They've got some themed jump packs and various different power weapons, thunder hammers and chainsaws and things. Even after you have made five models out of it, there's quite a lot of bits left over to just sprinkle through the rest of the force and add a bit more Blood Angels theme. At least compared with Games Workshop's newer offerings as well, it isn't too bad in terms of money per models, far cheaper than the Assault Intercessors with Jump Packs for example. Otherwise, if you do want Jump Pack Space Marines on the cheap, you could potentially kit bash some out of some Jump Intercessors and the Jump Pack plastic bits that Games Workshop sells. There's still a set of 5 of those available on the Games Workshop web store. Fairly cheap at like 10 US dollars, so $2 per Jump Pack. Combine that with at least a relatively cheap Assault Intercessor and you can get more Jump Intercessors per money that you put in. Obviously a little bit different in appearance and you get the firstborn style of the Jump Packs versus the Primaris ones, but it could be one option that I've seen a fair few people make use of. If you could get your hands on extra cheap Assault Intercessors that might have been going from 9th edition kits, that could be kind of interesting as well. There were quite a lot of easy build ones going around then. To move on to perhaps address the elephant in the room though, there might be a bit of a debate as to whether or not you buy any firstborn Blood Angels or not. As I feel like at the moment Blood Angels are in a bit of an awkward spot with starting to collect an army of them, at least compared with quite a lot of armies in the game. Likely if you're collecting Blood Angels you probably want to be picking up some of their unique miniatures, things like their Sanguinary Guard or Death Company. But these guys kind of awkwardly just have a very very high chance of being replaced by a Primaris equivalent when the Blood Angels Codex drops sometime later in 10th edition. So far for the Divergent chapters it seems that Games Workshop either gives them some small releases like a character or something or goes all in for quite a big release similar to like what the Black Templars got. It looks like the Dark Angels are going to be getting theirs early in the edition. But at the moment we don't know when the Blood Angels Codex is coming out, and when it does come out we don't know whether it will actually bring a full range update, potentially replacing the current Sanguinary Guard and Death Company with really quite different miniatures, where the war gear and things might not be the same, and the scaling will certainly be different. I feel like this is something that's going to bother some people more than others. Depending on how it falls out, you might just be able to use any firstborn miniatures that you've picked up as direct equivalents for whatever replaces them, though the war gear might not be exact. But certainly for me, somebody who would get more Blood Angels, Death Company and Sanguinary Guard, I think, if there wasn't the possibility of an update sometime soon, it does make me want to hold off a bit, build out other elements of the army, and then maybe pick some up when the time comes around. At the moment, I'd maybe go for a bit of a half-half type approach. I'd certainly have a greater focus on things like more recent Primary Sculpts, building out things like Jump Pack Intercessors, and any models that have been updated like Dante and Mephiston if you like their characters, and perhaps some more things from the core Space Marine range that you're more attracted to. I feel like if you want a functional Blood Angels army that actually feels like Blood Angels though, you're probably going to want at least some Death Company or Sanguinary Guard, but I'd probably just go a little bit more sparing on them than you otherwise would have, so that if they do suddenly get updated, you're not going to be feeling like your army is absolutely ruined and you might have to start from scratch. The vehicles like the Bar Predator and the Furioso Dreadnought as well at least have some chance of going out of production as well. Games Workshop has been removing a bunch of firstborn kits. I feel like at some point both of those are going to go away, though it's possible they release a different kit to essentially replace them at the time, and they would still get Legends rules at least. Kind of frustrating that we can't know either way yet. I think it would be a bit of a silly thing if there's lots of people holding off on getting a Blood Angels army and then they don't wind up receiving their miniature update at some point later in the edition and it means that you could have got started and have years of use out of the miniatures rather than having them immediately upscaled. In any case though, talks of the future aside, and if you are just jumping in and getting a Blood Angels force off the ground, there's always a good scope for just collecting what you like the look of in Warhammer 40k. I feel like for the most part Games Workshop aren't doing too badly with keeping most units at least somewhat relevant in game, though some things definitely tend to be a little bit stronger than others. 
For the Blood Angels' unique roster in game, I'd say some of the things that are more powerful are the Librarian Dreadnought. That's really quite big for teleporting shooting units around the board, like getting Eradicators into range. Or maybe in Gladius, they could deliver the Fire Discipline combo into range of something good. Besides that, I'd say perhaps the strongest offering might be the Death Company backed up by the Martis. He gives them massive damage boosts and also minus one damage for weapons attacking them. And both being significantly more dangerous and significantly tougher is a big win. In general, I'd be most tempted by Power Fist and Inferno pistols on them at the moment. Otherwise, Dante and the Sanguinary Priests are quite good, though at time of recording are still annoyingly waiting for Games Workshop to get rounds to update the units that they're allowed to join in their index. It should be a really simple errata, and I'm not sure why it's taken so long. They just need a simple keyword fix to say that they can lead the Jump Assault Intercessors. Otherwise, the Bile Predator can be quite nice as a good Overwatch threat, though I'd say that currently the Sanguinary Guard and probably the other flavours of Dreadnought are a bit on the overcosted and rarely used side. Sanguinary Guard in particular are quite a long way from the melee powerhouse that they've been in the past. They could definitely do with going down in points a bit. Otherwise, loads of options out of the core space marine range as well. Units like the Gladiator Lancer and Redemptor Dreadnought just bring some raw power and mass damage. Inceptors can be great while dropping on to objectives and still sort of keep up the Blood Angels jump infantry theme. Scouts are nice and cheap and skirmish on the midfield well, and aggressors can be quite big for big damage combos, maybe coming out of a land raider perhaps. If you're playing Sons of Sanguinius then just about anything melee for Space Marines does get a bit better as well. Overall I start getting in some small games early though, learn what works and what doesn't and what you like about the army, and have a rough end goal in perhaps a 2000 point list that you're roughly aiming for, though adapting the plan as you go along and as you learn more insights. For acquiring the rules for the faction, Index Blood Angels is currently freely downloadable on Warhammer Community under Downloads, though that only gives you the datasheets for their unique units. For the majority of the Space Marine army and range, you do need Codex Space Marines to be able to play with. In general, most Blood Angels armies do need at least some things from the core Codex. It's not really very credible to build an entire army literally out of Blood Angels index units and nothing else. There are some Blood Angels physical index cards on offer as well, which could be of interest for a bit of a tactile reference point. Quite nice to have unit data sheets just spread out in front of you when you come to a game. Might be of worth if you're learning the rules and you don't want to be flicking through PDFs all the time. As mentioned, we don't know when the Blood Angels Codex is going to come out. That will eventually materialise itself as a supplement book to Codex Space Marines, so you'd still need both. We know that it's certainly no earlier than Autumn 2024, so it's not going to be super early in the edition. Though I'd personally not wait for this and start getting together the core of an army and things that you think have a good chance of being relevant after the codex dropped. As mentioned, a bunch of units are kind of at risk of being updated or invalidated. For the core rules of the Blood Angels, the standard Space Marine rule is Oath of Moment. They do get that and basically get to select one unit to reroll all hits against. Space Marines seem to be quite good at just going after one target in a very big way each turn, and that can be quite nice with some powerful boosts like lethal hits. From there, they can choose to then use any detachment in Codex Space Marines, so they can use the Gladius or the First Company Task Force or whatever else they like. And beyond that, they do have their own themed one in the Sons of Sanguinius detachment. That one's got a bunch of kind of flavorful Blood Angels rules. They get the core rule, the Red Thirst, with a plus one attack and plus one strength on the charge making any combat units hit a bit harder, though I would say that the rest of the detachment is kind of disappointing. Red Rampage is an okay damage dealer melee stratagem as well, but a lot of the rest just seems either kind of niche or overcosted on the enhancement side. Typically in 10th edition so far, barring any major rules changes, the Blood Angels seem to be far worse than Gladius since their rules came out, perhaps particularly due to things like the advance and charge option that Gladius has, getting your units into melee with things they couldn't already reach. Currently in tournaments, Blood Angels do occasionally do quite well at Grand Tournaments, though often these lists tend to go kind of depressingly light on the actual Blood Angels unique units, maybe just mixing in a few things like one squad of Death Company with Lamartis, or even a single librarian to teleport Gladius firepower things around. As mentioned, a lot of the unique stuff is just kind of underwhelming, though hopefully that should mean that the factions in Games Workshop's balance crosshairs for improvements in the future. Finally, just for one example of how a Blood Angels army might be able to come together, I thought I'd just talk about one cool list that did kind of well at a tournament, and wasn't just running very token Blood Angels forces, but actually managed to make a whole load of units from the Codex work. This one I noticed was run by an Owen Bissell, who used it to take third at OP's V for Volkite tournament, 24 players and going 4 wins to 1 loss, and managing to do so with some units that are considered quite a lot more niche than many. 
The list is going for proper fluffy blood angels with sons of Sanguinius and is led by Lamartes, Mephiston, Dante and a lieutenant with a combi weapon. Lamartes is leading a massive block of death company with inferno pistols and power fists, massive melee damage, pretty dangerous close range shooting and fairly survivable with minus one damage as it goes as well. They should rightly terrify just about anything in the game. Dante is leading a sanguinary guard unit, two power fists, a banner and inferno pistols beyond their uncommon blades. A seriously pricey unit that one, clocky in at almost 500 points Dante included. Probably a bit overcosted realistically, but it does seem that they've been used to good effect here, and they should certainly be able to clear out just about any normal size enemy threat. Otherwise, looks like Mephistons with the 10 assault intercessors with power fist and plasma pistol. I guess they might be being teleported round the board with a librarian dreadnought. That could allow them a potential first turn charge, though you will be gambling on a risky 9 inch one if so. Kind of fun to see the Lord of Death in play. I've not seen him in competitive lists very much in 10th. Otherwise, there's a single unit of Inceptors with Plasma. They can drop nicely to do secondary objectives and be quite a serious threat too. A unit of Infiltrators for 12 inch Deep Strike Denial. They could be an interesting choice for holding down a home field or midfield objective. Five scouts for cheap forward deploy screening and redeployment secondary shenanigans. The same could be done by an allied Calidus assassin jumping round the board to do secondary points. And then there's two whirlwinds sat in the backfield. Some fairly punchy indirect firepower that can threaten a bit of battle shock on infantry if it's relevant. But whirlwinds can combine quite nicely with assault units to reach out and damage units that otherwise might be beyond the melee reach. Overall a very cool army list. And great to see some Blood Angels having a little bit of success with some cool units like Sanguinary Guard and Mephiston on the board. In any case, hope that's had at least a few bits of inspiration for collecting a Blood Angels army in Warhammer 40k. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and any other tips for collecting the faction that I might have missed. If you've enjoyed the video then feel free to subscribe to Auspex Tactics. I'll leave my index review for the Blood Angels from the start of 10th edition down in the video description. Feel free to check that out if you'd like something else for the faction to watch. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Auspex Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and if you'd like to help support, then that's linked in the video description below as well. Channel backers do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with the chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.